brought to you by Kellogg. Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? Let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the famous author and comedian, Mr. Alan King. May I present the lovely lady who's been flying back and forth across the country for the thrill of it all. That's the name of her new motion picture, the very talented Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman whose book, Riddle D.D., -D, proves to be about the jolliest thing on everybody's Christmas list, Mr. Bennett Cerf. Twinkies, Arlene. Full of Twinkies? <laughs> here's, here is our deaf, dazzling, dapper, and diapering panel moderator, <laughs> John Charles Daly. There's only one thing you can say about me in this area right now. I've stuck myself several times, but I haven't stuck my son yet. That's something. <laughs> And it's nice that while Bennett was being alliterative in the D's, he left the dopey out, so I'm starting out well tonight. Alan King, it's nice to have you with us, sir. Thank you, John. We have some very interesting occupations. I think you'll all have some fun in the next half hour. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this word from Kellogg's. Hi. This is Dennis James. You know, maybe you have read some of this back and forth talk about cholesterol. Well, a lot of people are concerned about the amount and the type of fats and what they eat. Well, I can promise you this. You can enjoy the special K breakfast without a qualm. Because this is a true low-fat protein meal. Now, take a look at it. Because you've got fruit, black coffee or tea, special K, skim milk, and a teaspoon of sugar. It's 99% fat-free. Now, another good thing about this special K breakfast there's only a slim 240 calories in it. What is in it is plenty of good, satisfying eating. It's good looking and it's good tasting and it's a solid meal with complete protein to get you going and to help you stick to a sensible diet all day long. This is the best known weight control breakfast in all America and you're going to like it. So how about it? Start tomorrow on the special K breakfast. Do it then, okay? Okay. And now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Pauline? Laton, right? Yes. Is it um, Miss or Mrs? Yes. Miss Litton, and where are you from? Montreal, Canada. Montreal, Canada. How nice to have one of our northern neighbors with us. May I present our panel? Miss Litton? Now, will you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score and what's my line, Miss Litton? Yes, I do. All right, in that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Tondre is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Cerf. Mr. Tondre, there was a little snickering when your service was announced. Uh, would it have anything to do with either entertainment or athletics? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do you consider that there's anything amusing about it, Miss Laton? Sometimes. Uh, do you, uh, well, let us. Uh, say, could I use your services if I were in the right area? 
Well, I would say this, that under circumstances that put you in the proper juxtaposition, yes, and that would perhaps cause even more snickers. <laughs> more snickers. Oh. Um, when I availed myself of your services, would you be present in the same room with me? Well, if you were directly to require the services of Mr. Tan, we would agree that she would have to be in proximity to you to perform the service. Mm -hmm. Would you be wearing any distinguishing uniform? No. Nope. Two down and eight to go? King. Could I avail myself of your service? <laughs> I hope so. Now, uh, would this particular service be, uh, have anything to do with the area that you live in, say, in Canada, as against someone living in the United States. Well, I mean, is your question specifically, Alan, if the work is done in Canada? Yes. Yes. Is it native of Canada? No. no Rather than native to other countries. Yes. Peculiar to Canada. Yes. That's fine. That's three down and seven That's to go, Miss Fred. <laughs> Do you have to have special training for your work? Yes. Of a kind, yes. Yes. Is it, uh, is it uh, something that requires a skill on your part? Mm -hmm. I would think so, yes, I would think so. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, use your body as well as your mind in your job? <laughs> I think it's nice if a girl does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think yes? we do. But although we wouldn't put any particular stress on it, I would think so. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that, John. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is there anything advisory about your work? No. no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Sander, does your work involve animals in any way? Animals? Yes. No. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Miss Litton, if I needed your services, would I be in trouble? No. <laughs> I hope not. Six down and four to go, Mr. King. Would I be happier? Oh, yes. Would it, would it aid Sometimes. me, besides uh, giving me joy, would it aid me, uh, my health, well, physically? Well, if you were in a position and in the circumstance where you would have use of this service, we would have to agree that it would have some effect upon your health, yes. Would it be beneficial? We would certainly hope so. Uh, not knowing very much about me, have, do you think I have availed myself of your particular type of service? Of the particular kind of service which is performed in its general character, I would say, although you may not have had it specifically at the hands of Mr. Tund, you certainly have had it uh, sometime or another, yes. Yeah. <laughs> in both sexes. A lot. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But, uh, I'm going to pass. Uh, men and women both then use your service, is that correct, Mr. Tund? Yes. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, do you work indoors? Yes. Is anything served to the people that might be within range of your service? Yes. Is what is served either something to eat or something to drink? Yes. Uh, do you work in a bar or restaurant? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. I thought you were on the trail. I thought she was a bartender. No. Uh, there is food and drink, so yes. involved in what you do. Would it be food rather than drink? Would you repeat it, please? Would the, would, the, would the service in which you are involved be more concerned with food than it is with drink? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mr. Turner knew what a disappointment that would be to you, Bennett. <laughs> Does the food have anything to do with uh, the condition that people are in when they receive this food? I mean, do the people who receive this food have to be in sort of a special condition rather than just wandering into a restaurant for something to eat? Well, I would say this, that they would have to have a relationship that was somewhat uh, more uh, close to Miss Latendre than the relationship that would exist between somebody else who was receiving this service just in, by going into a restaurant. Does this food give them any kind of restorative powers that they may have lost through drunkenness or sickness? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say no to that. Eight goes two to go. <laughs> Miss Gilgallan? Uh, may I rule out that you do not work in a hospital? 
Or may I rule out that you do work in a hospital? I do. Yes, Don't. you may rule out. Uh, yes, I want to rule out hospitals. Not a bar, not a grill, not a hospital. Do you work something in something other than on land? Yes. Do you work in the air? No. no. Nine down to one thing go, Mr. King. Well, there's only one thing left. <laughs> Unless you dig ditches, I don't know. <laughs> Does that have anything to do with the sea? Yes. Uh, do you work aboard a ship? Yes. Uh, do you walk? Do you work aboard a uh, transatlantic liner? No. Ten dollars and nobody goes. But you've gotten pretty close. Actually, Miss Latton is a cook on a tugboat. With the McAllister Towing Company, is it? In, in yes, McAllister Towing Company of Montreal. Of Montreal, and yes. she works on a tug named Felicia, yes. the color of which I am uh, properly advised is virtually the color of this lovely red dress that yes. she is wearing. Where did your boat ply? On the St. Lawrence River? Yes, mm -hmm. in the Arbor of Montreal. Mm -hmm. You mean there are special uh, dining, uh, they dine as luxuriously as that on tugboats? On tug? Oh, listen, that's some of the among the best fed, fed people on the yeah. face of earth are, are tugboat crews. Really? Aren't they? They're all fat anyway. <laughs> you don't look like tugboat Annie, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but this is wonderful. You did fool the panel and thank you for coming all the way here. You did? <laughs> we gave them a rough time. Thank you very much. to meet a second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Samuel? Credit, right, sir? Where are you from, Mr. Credit? I'm from Orange, Connecticut. Orange, Connecticut? Yes, Mr. Daly. Nice to have you with us. May I present our panel, sir? Now, would you join me? Do you know how we keep score, Mr. Craig? Yes, I do. All right, we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, Mr. Mr. Kremen, we can tell you, is self-employed. <laughs> And deals in a product, and I think you've got some idea already of what you're in for. So let's begin it with um, Alan King. He's pretty sneaky the way he sat down there and just, you know. <laughs> uh, have I ever used your product? <laughs> well, would you think I have? No, I would say we... we yeah, you know, I would say no, that you've not had any uh, direct use or indirect use of the product. Miss Francis? Is this a product, then, that would not be used by uh, a male? Yes. A male person, a human, a male human. Yes, that's right. Is it a product that might be used by some, something in the animal kingdom? Don't be cool, Mr. Krevitz. Yes. Come on. Yes, that's right. Is it uh, used by a four-legged animal? Yes. Is it used by an animal that might be around the house ever? No. No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sip, and we took that to mean around the house, the inside of the house. In other words, you were speaking... No, I meant around the outside of the house. Around the outside. <laughs> this thought I down. Do what you please. It's, 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 <laughs> it's still two down and eight to go. This is her. Mr. Kravitz, is this uh, a domestic animal rather than a wild uh, animal that would be found in a zoo? Yes, it is. In other words, it's an animal that might be found on a farm. Correct, yes. Would it be uh, bigger than a pig? Yeah. <laughs> That's a be, pretty uh, big pig. <laughs> Don't get personal. <laughs> uh, would it be uh, an animal that might be used, well, is it in the horse family? It's not a horse. It's no, it's not, not in the horse family. That's three down and seven to go. Miss <laughs> Kilgallen? It's not a horse. It's not in the horse family, is it? That's right. It's a clown. Well, Bennett had me puzzled, you know. He publishes a dictionary. No, um, well, the thing is that actually I think Bennett used the word horse family, which would tend to rule out, for instance, Welsh ponies, ponies or a whole variety of, of equines. 
Okay. Oh, boy. Is it uh, in the bovine family? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Oh. Is it um, some kind of a cow? <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's it's some um, it's it, it's uh, it's uh, some kind of a cow, isn't it? Let's relate it. Just a minute. We need to have a small well, conversation. Anything in the cow family, I'll accept. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Yeah. If we what we mean to reply here is that it is in the cow family. That's right. It's some kind of a cow. All right. Is it a heifer or a bull? <laughs> Uh, well, Either I mean, one. Yeah, We're going to have a small thing. The answer, Dorothy, properly should be, it could. <laughs> Is it usually a bull? No. I, I think it's not usually a bull. No, right? okay. That's four down and six to go, Mr. King. Well, being brilliant, is it usually a cow, a heifer? A heifer? No, heifer. that's not usually a heifer either. Is it? No, it's not yes. usually. No. That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. It's either it can be both female or male, and it's not a cow. That's the whole. No, thing. nobody it's has said it's not a cow. No, it's not a cow. Well, is nobody it? has said it's not a cow. Oh, nobody said it's it. It has been cow. elicited that it's in that it's some kind of a cow, and then they went off to all kinds of cows. <laughs> is it a cow? There's a direct question. Very good, darling. <laughs> it is a cow. All right. Nice now, to... Mr. Kravitz's product has to do with the cow. Is that That's correct? That's right. Is it uh, something that is used by human? Is it used by human consumption? Whatever the product is. No. That's six down and forty go, Mr. Sir. Would this product, Mr. Cow? Kravitz, be used uh, on a particular part of the cow? <laughs> No, I wouldn't think so. Well, that would I would be the mouth, you know, that the cow no. would have in its mouth. No, actually, no, no, I wouldn't think it's a particular part of a cow. That's seven down <laughs> three to go, Miss Gilgallon. Oh, well, Mr. Crevett, does the cow come in contact with this product? Yes, it does. Uh, does it make the cow better off or happier? Oh, I'm sure of that. Yeah, I think we certainly can say a, an affirmative to both of those ideas. Makes the cow happier, I'm sure, and better off. Is it something tangible as opposed to something intangible like music, which might be piped to the cow? It is. Yes, yes it, is. it is. It is mm -hmm. tangible, yes. Is it placed over the cow? Mm, no. That's no. eight down and two to go, Mr. King. Uh, is it placed under the cow? <laughs> is, it, is, it a, is it a mechanical device? A mechanical device. That's nine down and one to go, Miss Frankie. Is it something the cow does something on? <laughs> It would have to be affirmative there. Yes. <laughs> would I be correct in saying the cow does not lie on this? Mm. He says it's a mattress for a cow. Right. <laughs> Mr. Trevitt is president of Bristol Cow, Cow Mass Incorporated, Cow Mass Incorporated Shelton. in Shelton, Connecticut, and this is made of, of rubber, and it's put on the, the, uh, the base of the cow's stall, and it protects his feet and others, and oh, it protects the cow against a lot of things that the cold, hard stone would be tough on, you know. That's nice, yeah, right? Do you right. have one for a double bed? <laughs> Hey, the cow has company. You <laughs> don't, don't, don't double there. I might consider it someday. <laughs> well, I must say, this would explain, I think, why perhaps uh, all of us enjoy milk and milk products so, so much. You know, if they've got all these comfortable cows, they, they reciprocate and give us all those wonderful things. Well, to, they give to better do. milk. They uh, give better milk and better ice cream. <laughs> and we all have more fun. Years ago, there was a slogan. I, I haven't seen it for years. 
from, uh, milk from contented cows. Mm -hmm. I guess Correct. I must have used your mattresses. Yes, sir. Of course, uh, a cow uh, uh, physiologically is at her best when she's comfortable, as we all know. We all are. That's the basis of my <laughs> invention. <laughs> uh, how recent is this invention, Mr. Kravitz? What's that? How recent, How recent is, is this invention that I don't know about it? Well, they have been in use about 15 years, actually. Well, I'm not very big with cows, but I never heard of that. <laughs> what did they do before? They just stood up all the time? <laughs> well, frankly, I, I, I have uh, many complaints from my customers that they're so comfortable they can't get them up to milk. And they have to <laughs> Uh, well, it still is a great, uh, I must say, a great recommendation for your math. That's the thing. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. We've had a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Fresh milk. Sparkling sugar and Kellogg's corn flakes. What a good way to start the day. You can enjoy just putting them together if you watch and listen closely. Remember, these are Kellogg's Corn Flakes with a flavor all their own. You know how good they'll taste, don't you? Most people know. More people eat Kellogg's Corn Flakes than any other cereal. Why don't you try them again? Soon. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my friends in the panel, if you all know, are always blindfolded. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yeah. Yeah. Good, well, you... Enter and sign in, please. All right, panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in show business? My Lord, say that sometimes I'm in show business, yes. Mr. King? Well, I'd be very popular if somebody in the audience is in pain. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you... Uh, have I ever worked with you? I don't think so, maybe. Miss Francis? There'd be one down and nine to go. Are you about to appear in a new picture that is opening called Lawrence of Arabia? No, not that I know of. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sirth. Are you at present appearing either on a Broadway stage or in a hotel or nightclub in the New York area? Uh, no, not really. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you more famous for your work in movies than on the stage? Well, that would be a matter of opinion, I'd think. But I would think specifically relating the two media that we would say yes to that. More famous movies. Yeah, Mr. King. Have you made recordings? Yes. Miss Francis? Have you uh, appeared recently in a picture that has opened on Broadway? Mm hmm. Mr. Sir? Have you got famous relatives in, also in the motion picture world? No. Small conference. <laughs> A relative? Oh. Well, I thought of it relative. that way. Yeah. I think we yes. need to say yes, Bennett. A wife is definitely a relative. Yes. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Uh, is your wife in film? Yes. Mr. King? I'm sure she didn't do Cleopatra. <laughs> uh, are you primarily known as a singer? Mm-hmm. Miss Francis? Well, you got it, Mr. King? Thanks. Except that I thought I'd work with him. I just think it's Bobby Darren. You think right. <laughs> we 
we did, but it was we did it. We did a benefit in Florida. Right you are, and uh -huh. I apologize, Alan. I was thinking work in the broader term like a week or two weeks sometimes. Right. Well, I never worked for a week in the broader term. <laughs> Bobby, is now, you're now playing in the finances with that mm -hmm. relative that we were thinking about, Miss Sandra D, who is really Mrs. Robert Darren. Wish she'd been here with you tonight. We would have loved to have you both. Thank you. She's, She's watching. watching. Is she watching? Good. She is. That's Produced what we like. Produced by Rose Hunter. We, we like, like <laughs> But you, you are actually now <laughs> spending as much time acting as you are singing, aren't you? Or at least... Well, I hope that I can say that next year at the same time, yes. Oh, well, I hope so, too. Thanks Thank very you, much, Bob. Nice Thank to you have you with us. Well, I think on that last one, we'll have to say you did fairly well tonight, panel. So you get some congratulations, and we'll all be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. Wondering what to give her for Christmas? Well, Universal has the answer. Any woman would love to get one of these Universal quick and quiet hair dryers. The Universal Bettina Hatbox hair dryer comes in a smart ostrich leather-like traveling case. And inside is the original universal hair dryer that's whisper quiet. It has four temperature controls to dry hair in comfort or give her a beautiful universal coffee matic. They make any coffee taste better. The new Resistane stainless steel interior is easier to clean. There's no metallic taste. Only universal makes the coffee matic. Or how about the universal hand mixer? It mixes faster because it has extra power. Or the new universal electric can opener. Opens any can at the touch of a finger. Remember, every universal gift gives pleasure every day. Uh, once again, a few seconds to remind you that if you'd like to apply to puzzle our panel with your occupation, the process is very simple. Send a snapshot that you can spare, because it can't be returned. Your name, your address, your occupation, and send all of this information, not to me, because it'll just have to be forwarded. Send it to What's My Line, CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. Well, being an old Boston boy, I must say that it's Boston's turn to get his Christmas present this year. Alan King is going to be up in my hometown then. I wish I could be up there to join you, Alan. Thank nice you. to have you with us. And good night, Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Alan. Come again, please. Thank you, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene. Happy flying. Thank you, darling. And I'm a Boston girl, too, you know. Oh, wonderful. Well, let's all go up together. Good night, Bennett, dear. We've got some beautiful, beautiful people here tonight, too. Hi. Good night, John. <laughs> Well, there you are. That's Bennett Surf. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Whitson and Bill Cox. This is Johnny Olsen speaking. The Peace Corps offers you a unique chance to do something about a better world. For information, write Peace Corps, Washington 25, D.C. also brings you Dennis the Menace on CBS television over most of these stations. Hi, this is Dennis James again. I just thought you might like to know that Kellogg's Special K here also comes like this, with eight single-serving packages in the handy pack, with the same low-fat protein cereal. But this way, you can give the Special K breakfast an individual touch. What's my line? Brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's Cereal. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek.